Hello, friend. Welcome back. The following is an impromptu conversation with one of my longtime friends, Koji Aiken. Koji is a true artist and businessman, and he has embarked on this new journey of creating and sharing drum and bass music. He's incredibly passionate about his craft. It brightens my day to see. This wasn't planned. I was super last minute. I was like, hey man, do you want to just record this hangout that we're having? We've been meaning to catch up and he came to my place and set up the camera and turned on the light and we just talked. Koji has been pursuing his dreams ever since I can remember him. Him and I go back to university. Uh, we used to make music together. We used to be very interlinked business-wise and creatively. Um, so it's nice to catch up with an old friend and talk biz and art. And what's interesting about Koji is he is now actively pursuing social media and garnering a great deal of progress and success. So it's cool to pick his brain and uh, have it kind of mesh with my brain because we are on similar styles of pathways. And it's just nice to have somebody to converse about these topics with. So that's what this conversation is. I'm going to break the 50 minute conversation into two sequences. So this is going to be part one and I will post part two tomorrow. There is some pretty insightful stuff that we discussed and you know, I think it's good enough to share with you. So this is part one of our two-part conversation. I hope you enjoy. Like, 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 like I know what, like I know the what, I just don't know the how. What is your, what is the what? The what? Yeah, what I is was the what? like becoming a touring, like, I mean, for me, it's multifaceted because it's like, I want to become an artist, like a touring artist. Like that's like my musical goal. But then I, I approached it in a way, I, like I kind of like, I approached it as an influencer rather than just as a musician. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So now there's this whole other like side of things like, okay, like what I want to do as an influencer and how can I use my being an influencer to support the art artistry? And it's like, it's like, like what we mentioned, but what I was mentioning before about like, how do you, you know, conglomerate both into a single unit that works harmoniously together? Yes. But, yes. Did I, we have that discussion before? No, we, well, we touched on it. I touched no, I'm sure on we it. did, because I, I, I just made a video on, like, it, marrying your business and entrepreneurial sides. Okay. Or, sorry, sorry, sorry. The entrepreneurial and the artist side. Or, like, yes. the business slash art. Like, they're two separate things, but you, like... The people who really made it have been able to, like... Yes. Bring them together. Yes. And I think that's kind of what you're talking about. Like, you're... Like, the influencer side is just another word for, like, the business. Business, side. yeah, the marketing side of things. Yeah. Yeah. Same with me. It, it's a very, very, very hard thing to strike a balance with because they both individually require so much work. Yeah. And a lot of times you have, like, you have, like, a lot of people who are just really good at one or just really good at the other. Like, right. you know, like, I'm sure you know, like, really talented artists who suck at business and vice versa. Like, really good business people who suck at art. <laughs> Yeah, tons. Yeah, it's but, crazy. But but doing what we're doing requires like such a, like understanding of both, and it, that's why it's so hard. Well, that's why it takes so much longer for us to do everything, right? And yeah, because like, we're we're operating at two different wavelengths at the same time, and it's like opposite sides of your brain. You know what I mean? It like, is. It is, and that's why I think like you probably can relate, but like it, it's hard to work on both at the same time. Yeah, you you yeah. tend to like dive into one, and then you have to dive into the other. Yeah, you can't do both. Or it's like different. It's a different mindset for both. You know what I mean? Like you can't. I mean, you could get creative with the business side of things, right? Like with the 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 content that you put out or yes. the creative that you put out and stuff. But like, really, the business side is all about analytics and numbers and data. At the yes. end of the day, that's what people care about. Is the numbers? Right? Mm -hmm. Like how many how how much money can you make? How much how many streams can you get? Like how many views can you get on a video? Right? Like it all comes down to that. At the end of the day. How do you think that you, um, like, figured out the what, like, what you're going to do? Because I've talked to you in the past where you, like, you didn't know remotely, like, what direction you wanted to go, I feel like. Yeah. Oh, How did you, like... Like, I that? always had a general sense of what I wanted to do, but it's just, like, it's been, like, refined more and more and more, right? Like By doing, right? By just doing things, yeah, because it's, like... You I have been I... doing a lot more, like, you've, I Recently? feel like... Recently? Or... In the last general. year or so. Yeah. Like, I feel like your output has increased drastically in terms of music and also content. Yeah, like well, it's because it's like I know what I want to do. Like, I'm not stuck being like, what is this? Or like, why yeah, am But I do you think this? you know what you want to do because you started to do things? Like, that's kind of what I, like, stand for to a lot of degrees. It's like you, you got to do it. You have you. to you have to, like, actually just get the ball rolling in order to figure out what you want to do. A lot of people, like, sit at the starting line and they and prepare, try to figure out yeah. what they want to do. But, like, the actual way, in my opinion, is to actually, like, is to 
start doing things blindly. And then as you start moving through that fog of like the unknown, you can start to like move the fog away. But in order oh, to move yeah. the fog away, you have to like step into the unknown forest. Yeah. 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 I, I would a hundred percent agree. Like I've seen more growth just doing things and like I've learned more just by doing like I've learned more releasing like self releasing my last three songs than I have studying music business for the last five years. There you, you know go. What I mean? like, that's a that's a cool point. Yeah. Right? Like it's you really just you really can't educate yourself on what you need to know until you've gone through the process and you understand like what you know you don't know you need to know right like so i think that first-hand experience is like incredibly important i think a lot of people are paralyzed these days because they have this grandiose scheme or plan that they don't want to fail because they put so much time and effort into it and it's like a lot of it's also an ego thing right like that people don't want to be vulnerable showing people that they suck at something right but like realistically like no one gives like no one cares at the end of the day if you're just starting out and it's really just a mental mental barricade that you got to get over in order to get to that next level of learning yes i completely agree with that i completely agree with that it's 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 interesting how people are afraid to fail like i am too i you are too but it's the ones that like can overcome that fear and realize that it's failure is not bad Unless you fail on, like, a substantial scale that, like, ruins you or your life, failing is not bad. It's actually, like, really beneficial. It's just life lessons, man. Yes, you learn day, so right? much. Like, you learn so much. Yeah, it's like the, the failure is just a tuition you pay to learn in yeah. a lot of cases. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Like, yeah. And, I, I, and I just feel like, yeah, the price of failing is so high for some people because of or the perceived like the perceived price of failure that, so that's high. what i'm saying is like but it all comes from like a lot of a lot of the time it comes from a place of like ego right like people are like scared to let go of this image that they have in themselves of being yes. like a professional or like whatever you know like that's why i feel like a lot of people like don't really branch out once they like figure out their thing is because they're so comfortable and so confident in their thing that if they like try and branch out yes try something else they might not be as good at it and yes. be like viewed as a laughing stock right but in reality it's like it's the only way you can grow i think you said like people would view you as a laughing stock that's so interesting because i feel like it's actually the complete opposite like if you're committed to something and you're okay with failing and you like keep trying at it i feel like people ad- like, admire that they, they do yeah. like they respect that and they admire the effort given even if you fail like there's this misconception that if you try something and fail or if you give it something you're all and fail, people will, like, hate on you for it. Yeah. But I think it's actually the opposite. I think people, like, really respect it. very that. supportive. Yeah. They're supportive I, 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 and they respect it, for the most part, unless they're... From like, my experience, yeah, the only people that really, like, reach out to me when I try something new is, like, to support me and be like, yo, you're like, this is awesome. Or, like, this is crazy. You know what I mean? Even if the results aren't there. It's just more just, like, people... And like, I think people don't realize that they have, like, a huge group of people behind them supporting them no matter what they do, right? Like, simply because they, like who they are so i think yeah i think that's got a lot of under under like hidden value in it too right it also just shows you who actually is watching and who actually cares and supports right because it's like not like i have conversations with like all the people who like are supporting me but like every now and then like when i put something new out or like try something new like i've been doing some this thing on my stories where i just like share my thoughts you know i'll just like sit there for five minutes and like write out a thought i have and share and then like Tons of people have been reaching out and been like, bro, like, this is, like, so, like, like today I, like, wrote a thing where I was just like, oh, yeah, like, I'm, the curse of ambition is, is feeling like you're always three steps behind. But the counter to that is is learning to be accepting of where you are and being grateful for what you've done. And then, like, I've had tons of people message me today be like, bro, this is, like, so real. Like, I needed to hear this today. And I'm like, yes, 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 yes. Very different for me just dancing to music in my kitchen. <laughs> you know what I mean? So. Yes, dude. I mean, that's, you're, you've unlocked the power of social media. Like, I've can totally empathize with exactly what you just said. I've been doing that for like two years and I've experienced exactly that. That's why I keep doing it. Yeah. It's so rewarding and fun to be able to share your thoughts and ideas with people and have them resonate. And yeah. not enough people do that, dude. I think like you and I are pretty unique in that sense. Like there's this misconception that like everybody's an influencer these days. Everybody's like trying to make it on the internet. But I actually don't think that too many people are sharing their raw, authentic thoughts and opinions online. Have you seen that video about like how... Like ten percent of the world want to create, but only ten percent of that actually create, and then ten percent of that yeah. actually succeed or something. Yes, it's it's just funny because it's like that point oh one percent of creators see like ninety percent of the attention, right? So then it looks like there's like 
I don't know, if you had 100,000 people making a piece of content every single day, yeah, it's going to seem like super overwhelming. But in the grand population of things, that's like yes. a margin of a percent of people who actually create for socials or whatever videos yeah. or whatever, right? How has, how has creating for socials like improved your life, would you say? Improved? Yes. It's a good, like, like, like improved my creative process or just what have I gained from what have you creating gained? a flat platform? What have you gained in your personal life from creating and putting your stuff out there? Personal life. Um, confidence, I guess. Just knowing that, like, I mean, we're talking about how redundant the number is, but it's also like a, a testament to like the work you put in, right? And like the, your ability to figure things out. So I think, yeah, a sense of confidence in myself and like, a sense of, like, security in, like, who I am. Like, it's been, like, okay, yeah, like, clearly something here is, like, working. And it's, like, I'm not doing social media for the sake of, like, blowing up or, like, like, obviously it's a platform for, for me as an artist. But it's, it's I, I generally create because I enjoy doing it. So going through that process and getting, like, the, the affirmations and the, the positive feedback from it has really just been, like, it's really secured me in my passion for, for what I do. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, you know, my passion for the drum and bass music, my passion for sharing music and my passion. But I also think like my sharing music is just my DJ side coming out, you know, so like really um, plat- or like really padding that, that passion for DJing and showing people new music. And it's like now it's like I'm exploring. Now it's kind of like really helped me figure out, OK, how, what do I want to create now? Right. As a as an artist. So, yes. yeah, it's, it's given me like a really clear line of, of what I want to do and why I do it, if that makes sense. Yeah. How does it feel to be, like, globally in the eyeballs, on the global stage? Like, how, how does that make you feel? Is it... Uh, I think it's, like, always something that, like, I've I've chased after, so, like, I'm comfortable with it. Like, I don't I don't mind being, like, having all these eyeballs on me all the time. Like, I've, I've always been someone to kind of thrive in the limelight, like... And I think, you know, it comes from my dad being an entertainer. Like, mm-hmm. he kind of put me on, like, put me in front of crowds uh when i was really young and then i put myself in front of crowds doing like dance and mm-hmm. and obviously djing and stuff so like being in front of people and being like the center of this being a spotlight has always been something uncomfortable with and now that it's doing it on a global scale it's kind of like yeah i gotta be a little bit more careful because like the waves that you make are a lot bigger than they used to be but it's also um yeah like i i feel like very very much at home like being in front of all these different people mm-hmm. if that makes sense yeah it does for sure like it feels natural to me like i don't feel pressured or like i'm not self-conscious or nervous at all yeah really because it's like and i think a part of it too is like i just want to show people like you can be your authentic self and like people will accept you right like i'm not i'm not, I'm not making videos in like flashy clothes or like in a pristine studio like i want to show people like you can literally blow yourself up or like make yourself by making videos of yourself in your kitchen like half the time in my pajamas man like <laughs> you know what i mean like it, yeah, it's yeah. like no one cares because it's like the 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 core the core thing behind what i do is is what translates to people right like i mean for me it's just like making music but for or sharing music but for like a someone who like makes food like it's about showing recipes right and if you're consistent enough then you'll build an audience of people who like follow you because they like like that. It's just a common interest thing. Do you think over time? Do you think that uh, like this is the future? Like in order to be successful as an artist, do you think people are gonna have to start to share their work online on the social media mm-hmm. landscape? I think it's a really. I think it's the best tool for it, but I don't think it's necessarily necessary because I know tons of artists who have like hundreds of thousands of plays on Spotify that have like a couple hundred followers on Instagram or something, right? Like, Mm -hmm. I think it's supplementary. It's like, it's like a website for your business, right? But it's like, you don't need a website to necessarily have a successful storefront business. That's a good, that's a good point. Like it it definitely helps if you, and especially if you know what you're doing, like, yeah, it'll, it'll, you can like scale your, your business, but it's like, some people are like, okay, just like making a hundred K a month from their selling, like, I don't know, like, up, upticked candy from a corner store or something, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. And it's, like, at that point, it's, like, I think, I think, I think people just get lost, and, like, I was actually talking to another artist about this, and it's, like, I think people get lost in the result. Like, they see, 
like I'll just explain from an art, like a like a musician perspective. But like a lot of people like strive to be like that like world famous headlining touring artist because of everything that comes with you know the the money, the fame, you know having an easy life, quote unquote, like getting to do all this like fun stuff. But like though I don't think those guys really got there because that's where they were aiming. Like their aim was more just like genuinely on making like good music or like the process of like getting a show together and like bringing people together, you know, and it's just a matter of really like the people that really succeed are the ones who enjoy the process and aren't really driven by results. Cause like, I agree. If, you know, like, you know, if you release a song and the results aren't where you are, you're going to get discouraged. Right. Yes. Or like, if you have this grandiose idea of like, Oh, like I'm going to get a hundred K on this song. And then like it flop or it doesn't flop, but it only ends up getting like 10 K. Like you're going to feel like, a 90k disparity between yeah. your expectations and reality but rea- but if you just go into it being like i want to release this and i want to share this music and share this art yes and you get ten thousand people looking at it then you're like holy shit like yes. ten thousand people saw my thing yeah and that's 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 a great point that you're making and i think that like transverses across all artistic mediums like i i feel that way for certain and uh yeah. it's such a hard thing to tackle like getting over the metrics getting over the the vanity of yeah. your artwork and I think a lot of artists start out that way like they start out in a very passionate enthusiastic way yeah. like solely with the purpose of trying to share their art right but as soon as they garner any degree of success like it's so easy for that success to infiltrate the mindset of an artist and like reorient the trajectory of of where their mind's at right to like uh, yeah. more aim towards metrics and that's kind of what like in the music scene, like an artist sells out, like an artist gets too big and he loses his core sort of demographic because yeah. he starts catering towards the masses. Um, it's a hard balance. And like, I, I, I've, I've battled with that and I'm sure you have, or you yeah. will uh, moving forward. As soon as you garner success, you're going to want to like hit whatever brought you success harder, but what brought you success might not be the trajectory that you inherently want to go as an artist yeah I'm, I'm actually struggling with that right now because the stuff that i the, the videos that i post like the style like the subgenre of music drum and bass that i post that does really well it's like really aggressive and very like in your face and loud and it's like it's yeah, great yeah. and i love it gives, that it gives me a stroke honestly yeah literally <laughs> like um but like i've been finding that whenever i make music it's a lot softer and like a lot or like the style of drum and bass i'm making is a lot more like melodic melodic and soft and like meant for listening you know what i mean rather than just like getting blasted at the club you know what i mean yeah. but time and place for for each thing so I, I, yeah it's like it's it's cool like i'm experimenting with all, both sorts and like discovering what i like about each uh each style you know like the more harder stuff that's pl- and it's like cool too because now i can like strategize for that right like if i know a track is going to do really well on socials then it's like you push really hard for that right but it's like if you have a softer song and a more chill song that you want to put out, then maybe like trying to target uh, like playlists is the way to go to get like listeners and stuff, right? Yeah, dude. Cool. Uh, it's all it's all it's all a process though. Like I still have like no clue what I'm doing. Like it's kind of just shooting in the dark still. Or like ed- educated that, shooting in the do dark. You think, do you think there ever will come a point where you know what you're doing? No. Or do you think you'll always just, like, forever say that? No, I think I'm always going to be figuring it out. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was, yeah, I was, uh, like, uh, I was at Red Room the other day. I was talking to this guy, Def3. He's been, he's, like, a, he's been a hip-hop artist, and he's, like, trying to figure himself out for, like, the last 20, 23, I think he said 23 years, whatever. So he's been in the game for a minute, and he's, like, just starting to find, like, his voice as a, as a rapper in the electronic music industry. Mm-hmm. And, like, he's, like, really trying to figure it out. But he was, like, telling me about, like, bro, like, I'm trying to figure out this release, and it's, like, I got another thing going on here, and I got another thing here, and it, like, made me realize, I was, like, that feeling never goes away, especially as a creative. Like, you're never going to feel like you're on top of it or you have it figured out. Yeah. I'm sure you feel that, too, too. Like, you always have things well, that you need to figure yeah, out. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I'm just wondering if that'll ever go away. And I don't know the answer. It might. Like, I might force it to go away at one point because... Do you want it to go away, though? Well, I don't know. I might. Because I feel like it's, like, such a driving force for growth. It is. It certainly is. Um, but I think there would probably come a time in my life where, like, forward progress isn't a priority. Like, for example, if I have, like, a family and kids, yeah. I might not necessarily want to keep driving forward with that family. I might want to, like, 
be stagnant and nurture in place for a bit. But, the, but you then, know what I mean? But then it's like you're still growing in a different way. For sure, absolutely. Um, but I would have more of a grasp on, like, stability. Like, I wouldn't, you know, there's a semblance of instability with you and I right now because we don't know what we're doing. And there's a million different options, right? But, like, if, if I had a family or if I had, like, some sort of, like, poignant goal like raise my family <laughs> like there would be a semblance of mental stability there uh, yeah i'm just yeah i'm just wondering if like uh, if i don't ever get to a point where you kind of feel stable in your trajectory I, th- I feel like there is actually even with your artistry i do think that like if you stumble upon a path and you hit a path for long enough and like there's a degree of consistency um and predictability i do yeah. think that you can like fall into a healthy rhythm of like not having oh, yeah, to worry like work about work life balance and stuff. Yeah, I mean like my my ideal kind of like this this is like if I could have an ideal week this is what it would be. It'd be like Saturday, Friday, Saturday, go do two shows. Sunday I spend recovering and like with 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 my girlfriend or whoever I want to hang out with. And then Monday to Thursday is like music, like studio grind. You know what I mean? Like if I could do that week in, week out and be making enough money to support myself, like like, bro, I'd be happy. You know what I mean? Like, that would be the dream. I feel like you can do that. I can, yeah. It's just, it's a matter of working towards it. But it's like, I don't have the connections, nor do I have the music or the brand yet to, like, really achieve that, right? Like, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. especially with, like, a lot of these festivals and a lot of the industry, it's like, they only book the people that they know based on things like relationship, previous shows, what other people say in the industry. And, it's, like, I understand, like, the, the economics of the, the industry as well, like, Everyone wants to book someone who's going to make them money. So, like, how do I bring that va- value as well to these to these people? Yes. So, but like one, so like I still have a lot to figure out. But at least I know, like, yeah. I, I know what I want to do. Yeah, you, you you can get there, bro. That's exciting. I I can see it. Like, you're 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 building towards that. Yeah, but but then it's like that. I I don't know what challenges that lifestyle will also impose. Right, like flights all the time like how taxing that'll be on my body like god forbid i get lost in the sauce and then i'm like miss a show or something like i don't think you will uh, no, I've, i i've i've already done that party <laughs> phase. Like, yeah, i've already yeah. gotten through that party phase of being a degenerate and like i know how to party responsibly now but yeah at least i hope i hope there's probably gonna be a couple slip-ups here and there do you think it's possible to be in your industry without partying yeah there's tons of people like who are sober like what do you mean like sober sure yeah yeah there's tons of like art a lot of artists are sober because they can't handle the strain that it has on their body right so and that's like obviously something i want to strive for too even even now like i feel like i'm not like when i'm when i have a gig yeah i'll have like a drink or two but i'm not there to like i'm still there to do work and like i treat it as like a professional setting like i'm not trying to get like rinsed like i eat like you know back at the frat parties or it was like dummy a six pack before you even hop on the decks dummy and like six pack while we're on the decks yeah and then wake up the next morning you know what i mean like so yeah i think i think yeah just my intentions with everything have become a lot more pure mm-hmm. not pure but like i'm doing things for the right reason now rather than yes than just trying to get murked and that comes from like alignment like you are you have alignment on the trajectory that you want to go so you can be more pure with your intentions yeah whereas like back in the day it's very hard to be pure with your intentions because you have no clue. What you don't know doing. what the fuck you're doing. So everything is kind of. Well, I didn't know yeah. who I was as an artist back in college, yeah. or university, and like we we spent like all at uni together. It was literally all about having fun. Like who can have the most fun on a Friday night? Yeah. <laughs> right. That there was really a, comp- a competition about that, and it's like, it was fun in the moment. You know, when you're like freshly eight, nineteen, twenty. It's like that's exactly where you should be like enjoying yourself having a blast but like you grow out of it fast and you realize that there's like more important things in the world mm-hmm. getting absolutely blitzed on friday night 